Hey, what's up, guys? This is Neeraj. I am back after a long, long gap. It's been almost one and a half months since I posted my last video because I was busy with my other works. But let's not talk about that right now and focus on today's topic. While learning about JavaScript DOM, I always wanted to make a slider that has some functionality, like the auto infinite slide show, which can be controlled with some next and previous buttons. But I never found any tutorials like that, so I decided to make my own. And after doing some Google search, reading some blog posts, and watching some related videos, I come up with this. You can see this carousel has all the functionality which I talked about earlier. It can slide automatically, and after this last slide, it starts from the beginning. You can see, and you can see the slider stops while I move the mouse cursor inside this slider. And after that, I can click on these buttons to move the slider forward and backward. Also, if I move my mouse cursor outside the slider, it starts working again. But guys, before moving ahead, let me clear you one thing: that if you are here to see some quick fix solutions or some shortcut video, then please you can leave this video right now because I am not going to show you guys any quick fix. Instead, I am going to teach you guys the main logic of this kind of slider, how it works, and how we can convert our thoughts into reality. So, if you like this idea, then hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and let's start the video. So, let me tell you about the logic of how this kind of slider works. But this is not the only logic that is available. There could be more, but this is one of those. Suppose these are the four elements that we are going to slide, and this is the main focal point the user can see, and the rest of the element will be invisible. And if you are curious about how we are going to align this element in this way, then for this we are going to use some CSS flexbox. But the main thing is not that, but the main thing is how we can make it infinite, right? Now we are at the end of this slide so and how we can start these slides again from the beginning but without going backwards so for that we have to clone this first element and assign it to the end of this slide so something like this now when it comes to the last slide it will look like this and at this time we have to rearrange these elements in this way now whenever our slider comes to an end we will apply this same solution and it will become our infinite slide so but what if i move backwards like assume that i am at the first slide and i have to go one slide back means the last slide so for that we are going to use the same solution which we used earlier but with some little changes this time we have to make a clone of this last element and assign it to the beginning of this slide so now when our slider comes to this position we have to rearrange their position like we did earlier i hope you guys understood the logic if not then don't worry you will understand everything once we start writing the code so here i have opened this file and inside it you can see i have these three files index.html style.css and main.js also here are some images which i will be using for this project and if you want to use these same images then you can find their link in the description box below here i also going to use some font awesome icons so i already linked this font awesome cdn to this html file now i am going to create a container inside this container i am going to create a div with the class name slides and inside these slides i am going to create a four divs with the class name slide now inside these divs i am going to place an image tag and i am going to assign those images one by one Okay after this slides div i am going to create another div with the class name slide controls and inside it i am going to create one button with the id prep btn and inside this prep btn i am going to 
add this font awesome icon again i am going to create another button uh, with the id next btn and inside this i'm going to use this font awesome icon now that's it for the html part and now let's move to the css part select entire document and make its margin 0 padding 0 and box sizing border box the universal thing right now select container c o n t a r n e r container and make its margin 0 and auto to make it center give it the width 60% or whatever you like and height uh, 400 pixel or whatever you like and make its position relative so we can place those icons correctly and you can see nothing changes because I haven't linked this style file style sheet file here so let me quickly do this and that's it now you can see those margin and padding has been removed now select slides with its class name and make its display flex and height 100% and you can see the changes now select slide make its mean width 100% now select images of this slide like this and make its width 100% and height 100% and you can see we have the perfect size images or let me make it bigger so you can see it clearly now select slide controls with its class name make its position absolute top 50% left 0 transform translate y minus 50% to make it perfectly center from the top and make its width 100% to expand it from one corner to another display flex justify content space between and align items center and you can see that these buttons have now comes in the both corners now let's style them a little bit so select next btn and prep btn at same time or you can give them a same id but I'm not going to do that right now make its cursor pointer background transparent font size 30 pixel border none padding 10 pixel and color white now at the same time select these two buttons with the focus pseudo selector and make its outline none okay and that's it for the css part you can see this is how it looks right now but let's write some javascript so we can make it functional and for that here at first i'm going to select some html element like const slide container equal to document dot query selector and i'm going to select this container 
after that i am going to select slides div const slide equal to document or query selector and slides also i am going to select those next and pre button this time i am going to use document dot get element by id method next btn and const pre btn equal to document dot get element by id and id is pre btn and here i am going to select all the slides but this time i am going to use let instead const and i will tell you why okay slides equal to document dot query selector all and select this slide now i am going to create a variable index and this time also i am going to use let and I'm going to assigning value one to it. Now at first, let's clone the first and last slide elements. First clone equal to slides index of zero dot clone node and true and const last clone equal to slides slides dot length minus one dot clone node and inside this i'm going to write true if you don't understand what is going on here then let me clear you something that this query selector all returns a node list and we can access this node list like an array index method. So here I want the first slide element. So I use zero for the first index and this clone node is the inbuilt method inside JavaScript, which allow us to make a clone of an HTML element. Inside this parentheses, we can write true to make a deep clone or we can also pass false if we don't want to make a deep clone means now it gives all the content that are available inside the slide for example this image or everything that are available inside this slide okay and i did same thing for this last clone as well but this time i want the last element so i use slides dot length and subtract one from it because node lists indexes are zero based now I'm going to assign them an ID first clone dot ID equal to first clone and last clone dot ID equal to last clone. Now let's append those clone element into this slides. So for that I'm going to use slide dot append first clone first clone because I want that first clone at the end of this slide so and I'm going to use slide dot prepend prepend last clone because I want that last clone at the beginning of the slide so now let's save this and you can see that same changes appears into our dome as well this is the first clone and this is the last clone now I want this first image into the first place instead this cloned one. So for that I am going to create another constant uh, slide width equal to slides and inside this and inside this square brackets I am going to pass this index dot client width. And I can do this because I already assigned a value of one to this index. So now this client width will give me the inner width of a single slide. And if I show you by console logging it, console.log slide width. This number is the 
width of this image and you can confirm it by using this inspect tool and you can see the same number here as well now i'm going to rearrange this slide so for that i'm going to use slide dot style dot transform equal to here i'm going to use this template literal and inside this i'm going to type translate x or you can use translate as well because in css translate x and translate is the same inside this parenthesis i'm going to use dollar symbol curly braces minus slide width because i want to translate it by negative number so minus slide width multiplied by index and at the end add this pixel and now you can see our slider now moves by one slide now it is time to make it slide automatically so for that i am going to create a function start slide now for that i am going to use arrow function and inside this function i am going to use this set interval method and for this interval i am going to create a constant variable interval because if i want to make some changes to the slider timing then i don't want to come to this function again and again to change this interval timing now i'm going to give a value of 3000 to this interval now inside this set interval method i'm going to increase this index by 1 in every 3000 millisecond now i'm going to copy and paste this line of code inside this set interval method now let's call this function over here start slide and you can see in every three seconds these images changes their position but to see the smooth sliding effect i'm going to give a transition effect to this slide i'm going to type slide dot style dot transition equal to 0.7 second and here is the smooth slide so but even after these images are over this slider is not going to stop and that is because in every three second this index is increasing by one so to fix this we have to reset the value of this index and to do that I'm going to add an event listener to this slide and event type will be the transition end. After that we can pass a callback function. This callback function will be invoked in every transition end. So let's check if this function is working or not console.log. Let's do transition end and you can see that same log message in every transition end okay it means this function is working fine so inside this function i am going to write an if statement and for the condition i am going to check if slides index dot id triple equal to not four three first clone dot id then i want to stop this transition instead this 0.7 second i'm going to write none let's quickly format this and after that i want to reset this index value to one and after that i want this same transform and translate effect but it is not going to work but before i tell you why it won't work let me show you something inside this console you can see it says cannot read property id of undefined so to fix this let me show you another thing inside this javascript file i am going to console log slides console log slides and you can see the node list with only four d elements 
but this node list must have six elements with these two cloned elements, right? And that is not happening because this cloning and assigning things is happening after the DOM is loaded. So to fix this, we need to reselect slide inside this transition and callback. So that's why I use this let instead const over here. And let me copy and paste this here. And to save some time, I'm going to change. I'm going to change this interval to 1000, which means one second. Let's save this file. And now you can see after this final image, all the other images are repositioning themselves right here. You can see right here. Okay. After this image. Yeah. And if you want to see how this is working, then you can comment out this line of code and see the magic. And this is what happens behind the scene guys. But we cannot see it because at that same time we removed that transition effect from this slide. So now let's comment back this in and let's save this. Now I want to stop this slider when I move my mouse cursor inside the slider. For that, I have to add an event listener to this slide container, add event listener. And this time I am going to listen to this mouse enter event. And in every mouse enter, I want to clear this interval. And to do that, here I am going to create another variable slide ID and here inside this start slide function i am going to reassign this set interval to this slide id and i can do this because every set interval method returns an id so now inside this clear interval i can pass this slide id and that's it let's check and you can see the slider stops when I move this cursor inside. But now I want to start the slider again when I move the mouse outside to the slider. For that, I have to again add an event listener to this slide container. Slide container and event type will be the mouse leave. And callback function will be start slide. Let's check. And this will stop. And this is working again. Stop. Working. Stop. And working. So far so good, but let's write some more code so that we can change slides when we click on these buttons. For that, I am going to add an event listener to next btn. Next btn dot add event list. And on every click, I want to call the move to next slide function. Here, I'm going to create this move to next slide function. Const move to next slide. And inside this function, I'm going to copy and paste this same code from the set interval method. Now it means I can now remove all of this code from here and call that move to next slide function here. And let's save this file and you can see it works perfectly fine. And now if I click this and you can see it works. But if I click on this next button very fast then something weird is happening. And this is because this index is increasing very fast and JavaScript gets screwed out. So to fix this inside this move to next slide function, where is that? We have to write if index is greater than or equal to slides dot length minus one then we don't want to do anything so return and you guys already know that to get this perfect slides 
we have to redeclare it again inside this function like this but instead writing this duplicate code every time i'm going to create another function get slides and inside this function i'm going to return this okay and here i am using this error function so i can do this on like like this i can do this only and this will fine and here uh, after doing this i can do this get slides and same thing goes for this get slides and let's check and this is working perfectly fine and if i click very fast then you can see nothing is happening right now it is time to write some code for this previous button so now here after this next button i am going to add an event listener to this previous button as well and event type will be click and for the callback function i am going to create another function called move to previous slide okay now here i have to create that function const move to previous slide inside this function i am going to copy and paste the same code but instead index plus plus i am going to do index minus minus and let's save this and you can see this works but after this last image it will go out of the document you can see right to fix this let's come to this transition and function where is that where is that yeah copy and paste this same code here and instead this first clone dot id now i want to check last clone dot id and instead doing this index is equal to one i have to do slides dot length minus two because this time we have to move our slider to this second last element and to get this index we have to subtract two from its entire length which is six minus two equal to four and that is going to be the fourth slide but again if i click very fast it will get screwed and to fix this inside this move to previous slide function we have to check if index is less than or equal to zero then we don't want to do anything else just return now let's check but before that let me change this interval to 3000 millisecond let's save and yeah this is working this is working perfectly fine but now i'm going to add an overflow hidden to this container and you can see this slider works perfectly fine now if you want to add some more content inside these slides you can do that as well let me show you by doing that inside this slide i am going to create a div with the class name slide content and inside it i am going to create an h1 tag inside this i am going to write this is heading okay let's save this inside this css file i'm going to make this slide position relative and down here i'm going to select select that slide content now make its position absolute absolute top 50 percent left 50 pixel transform translate y minus 50 percent and font size 
60 pixel and color white and you can see the magic guys yeah this is heading you can add whatever you want you can add anything inside this slide and use your css skill to style them you can add any call to action button and anything many thing whatever you can add so i hope that i was able to explain to you guys the concept of this infinite autoplay slider carousel or whatever it is and if you have any doubt then let me know that in the comment section and to see more videos like this subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and i will see you guys in the next video till then happy coding